it obviously pays to invest, the Cupra Formenter is Cupra's first, and thus far only, standalone model and currently accounts for 50% of UK sales. The bean counters at the Volkswagen Group should take note. We're testing it here in second rung V2 1.5 TSI spec and, yes, the beady-eyed among you will have spotted that the images aren't of the V2. Sadly, we couldn't get our test car photographed, but to me the V2 loses little of the VZ2's visual appeal. The Formenter is a decent looking thing, to the point where non-car friends were interested to know what it was when it was parked up outside my house. They've never shown similar curiosity in a BMW X2. Equally, you'd never know from inside that you're not sitting in one of the top of the range models. One upshot of the large, 12 inches touchscreen that dominates the cabin is that you're not left with many blank switches in lower trim levels, simply because there aren't many in the first place. In fact, all Formenters get the same sized, twin screen setup, 12 inches for the infotainment, 10 inches for the digital dials. The V2 also gets figure hugging, electric seats in Nappa leather, the latter normally the preserve of high spec exec cars, heated steering wheel, electric tailgate, and parking sensors all round. Additionally, it still has the separate climate control switches in the back, plus a couple of USB-C ports back there, so the kids won't feel shortchanged either. Head and legroom are decent in the rear. The ubiquitous Volkswagen 1.5-litre petrol is available with both DSG and manual gearbox options, but we've tested it here with the dual-clutch setup. With 148 brake horsepower and 184 pounds-feet, it'll hit 62 miles per hour in 8.9 seconds but because there's no mild hybrid technology, the emissions of 155G kilometer aren't sector-defining. They are similar to a car like the X2 and a couple of tax brackets behind the Peugeot 2008. The Formenter is definitely at the more engaging end of compact SUVs, but the trade-off is that the ride is also at the firmer end of the spectrum. Not that this should come as a massive surprise, even just a cursory glance at the 19 inches wheels, standard on the V2, should give a clue that you're not about to jump into a magic carpet. It's also partly down to the spec. Previous versions we've tested all featured adaptive dampers, but the V2 1.5 TSI doesn't get these. It does, though, still keep various driving modes, so you can alter other aspects of the car's character like engine response and steering weight. None of these fundamentally tweak the car's character, but that's not a huge miss when the basics are largely spot on. The engine spins away happily and is, most of the time, unobtrusive, it's only when you really rev it that the sound becomes coarse. But you get very little performance gain by carpeting the accelerator so our suggestion is to leave it in the lower rev range. The throttle response in comfort isn't the sharpest, as we also found in the most powerful 306 brake horsepower version, but sport mode tweaks it to become more aggressive. As with most VW Group products, the steering is accurate enough, if lacking in ultimate levels of feel. The body roll is well controlled and you can have a reasonably rewarding drive across your favorite back road. It's no sports car, but there's a depth of driving involvement that's lacking from a lot of this class, Mazda CX-30 accepted. Arguably, this is the sweet spot of the Foreman to range. The VZ1 and VZ2 trims don't add a huge amount of extra kit, other than a safety and driving pack for the latter, so the V2 makes the most financial sense. That is if you can make do without the most powerful engines and adaptive dampers, as the top spec, Golf R Source 306 brake horsepower lump is only available on VZ versions. This new Cupra is named after a remote beach on Mallorca, nestling on the northern outcrop of the Mediterranean island at the end of a snaking mountain pass that drops from the sprawl of Polenka. A few years back, I was enjoying a family holiday thereabouts when who did I bump into? None other than car editor at large Ben Barry. Small world etc. This time my surprise encounter is with an even closer family member, it's the Formentus new plug-in kin, the e-hybrid downsizes our VZ2's 2.0 litre TSI for a smaller 1.4 paired with an 85 kW electric motor with a choice of 201 brake horsepower or 242 brake horsepower system output. We're in the brawnier version. Charging the 13 kilowatt hours lithium-ion battery every night means we manage 21 miles on silent e-propulsion before the petrol engine awakes, not matching the claimed 34-mile e-range. 
It seamlessly juggles both power sources. Acceleration feels brisker than the claimed 7.0 seconds 0 to 62 miles per hour and there's a surprising wriggle of torque steer under full throttle. Because 94% of UK journeys are shorter than 25 miles, the Formenter e-hybrid makes more sense than our thirsty VZ2. A new arrival has joined the car magazine long-term test fleet, and few members of the public have a clue what it is. We'll be living with the Q Performanter for the next six months and you can follow all the action and commentary right here, in our daily driver diaries, with monthly reports and extra bonus snippets and observations. In keeping with its sporty positioning, we're testing the Formanter in muscular 306 brake horsepower form. It's the Top Dog 4 Drive DSG model powered by the VW Group's 2.0-liter TSI turbocharged 4, so a mildly detuned VW Golf R in Spanish finery, and that means performance figures to make you sit up and take notice. Cupra claims 0 to 62 miles per hour in a Porsche bothering 4.9 seconds and top speed electronically capped at 155 miles per hour. Other engine choices are 1.5 TSI petrols and a 1.4-litre PHEV that we'll be sampling in the weeks ahead. The badge might be daft, but the rest of the Formentor's package is more mature, 